as you all know, guys, today is Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all the dads. All right? And since it's Father's Day, napansin nyo ba pag Mother's Day, laging may Mother's Day message. Pag Father's Day, revelations ang topic, di ba? So, end times, no? But we're going to change all that, all right? We're having a Father's Day message for all the dads who are here today. Of course, this is also applicable to all the moms out there. But of course, we want to focus really on the fathers and this is the heart of our movement. This is the heart of our church. I am blessed to have so many fathers of what we call of the house. I'm not sure how you are with your relationship with your dad. I have a good relationship, though my dad is quite quiet. Okay, tahimik si daddy. And so uh, my dad was in business. Our dad taught us the ropes in business. But my dad also knew he needed help from other men. And so he all told us to go to church. And I grew up here in Victory since grade six. I was already in Victory. And I have so many fathers of the house has shaped me and helped me to become the man I am today. And you are blessed. Okay. Victory Makati. Okay. Everybody who's watching this, you are blessed to have a lot of fathers in the house. And I want you to take that opportunity and leverage on that opportunity to have fathers within our midst who can coach you, mentor you, and in some ways, father you also, right? So, wala po tayong excuse na wala po tayong tatay, marami po tayong tatay dito. And as a community, this has been our heart. This has been how we've operated. We want people to experience the father heart of God to the fathers that are in this community, right? So, happy Father's Day again to all the fathers of the house. Okay. Now, we look at Ephesians chapter 6. If you have your Bibles, turn it there. Ephesians 6, verse 1 to 4. Very short text for today as we talk about fathers. But before we do that, my introduction is this four verse, and then we'll talk to the dads. But let me first talk to the sons and to the daughters before we talk to the fathers. The Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. right? The Bible talks about children, mga anak. Okay, all of us are children, am I right? The reason you're here is because you're a child, right? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. The Bible talks about us obeying and in Exodus honoring our fathers and our parents. Now, we all know nobody's perfect, right? All dads make mistakes, right? I made a lot of mistakes in my life. All of the dads here could say actually amen yes i committed a lot of mistakes also they're not always right but obeying them according to scripture is right right this now pertains if you are in the jewish culture this pertains to people who are under the household of the dad right under the single kapa you know you don't have your family you have to obey your father why if daddy pays the bills daddy in many ways still controls you because you're still dependent on your father okay the bible says that children so i'm talking to all the children here who are still under their parents care obey your parents for this is right right not because they're always right you will not see eye to eye in some issues yet the bible tells us you have to obey them and honor them because it's the right thing to do right and there's so many ways on why we need to honor and obey our parents. I remember there was one time during our men's victory group, one of those guys was, was struggling because his dad was an absentee father. His dad, he never saw his dad growing up. And so while everybody was honoring their dads, this guy was struggling. And during his turn, he said, I don't know how to honor my dad. I've actually never seen my dad. And he started crying. And he said, I'm not sure how to do this exercise. But I remember years ago when his dad, uh, after that meeting, he started reaching out to his dad. And they started talking again. Years ago, his dad died, and we were in the funeral. And when he stood up and honored his dad, all of us in the room were crying. 
because there was something now he can honor his dad with. First of all was the DNA. He looks like his dad. So every time he says, Pogi ako, that's acknowledging his dad, right? And secondly, it's because without my dad, I'm not even here. I will not fulfill the purposes of God for my life without my dad taking part in this. And when he started honoring his father and seeing the goodness of his father, in spite of all the mistakes his dad has done, it brought honor and glory and healing to his soul and to his heart and has blessed many people. Dads and moms are never perfect. Okay? That's why as human beings, and we've talked about this in the past preachings, we have to assume the best and look at the best, whatever is true, pure, noble. Think of such things. Because one day, children, especially the young ones here, one day you are going to be a parent also. And you will go through the same things we go through as parents. And to create a culture of honor and respect is a goal that each and every one of us must need to have. The Bible says, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you look at how of all the Ten Commandments, this was elevated to a point that this is a command with a promise. That if I honor my father and mother, because it's the right thing to do, not because they're right or they're honorable, then there's a promise for us that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. I know this is a hard verse for some of us. Yet the Bible says, if you want a peaceful, long life, learn how to honor your father and mother, right? Because that's now creating a culture within your own family line as you have your kids in the future to start having this, getting used to this. You know, uh, if you guys know our family, we're a very sarcastic family. We love making jokes, and it's something that we're trying to, you know, as Tammy and I, we're now trying to, uh, let's not be too sarcastic, even with our own kids, because we grew up that way. But rather, create a culture of honor and respect and learning how to affirm one another. Because this is something that we can actually give to our kids so that in the future, our grandkids would grow up with a culture of honor, of respect among each other. Honor means to put much value. In Exodus 20.12, it says, Honor or put value to your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. It's me putting it's not because you deserve, I give. It's me putting value to you because you're my dad, because you're my mom. And so I honor you for that. God values the relationship fathers have with their kids. Now, you have to understand Scripture because when you look at the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, they live in a very patriarchal society, Right? Philippines is very matriarchal. It's the mommy, right, who has to say. Now, in Jewish traditions and culture, it's very patriarchal. What the daddy says, that's what's going to happen. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay? That's very patriarchal. If you look at Scripture, you would see that God puts emphasis on the father and his relationship with his kids. In fact, when Jesus tells us to pray, He tells us, pray like this. Recite this prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. He didn't say our boss. Okay, when you pray, pray our boss who art in heaven or our King of kings, Lord and Lord, majestic of all. No, He says, our Father. I give you the spirit of sonship so you can cry out to me, Abba what? Father. God now takes the concept of fatherhood and says to the church, call me dad, because I will exemplify to you what the father truly is. So there's 
the sacredness, again, of this relationship between kids and fathers to the point that God says, call me dad, call me Abba Father. I give you the spirit of a son and of a daughter and you can actually address me as daddy. Call me dad, call me papa because that's what I want to be. This is what it means to create a culture of honor. It's understanding the holiness of the relationship between fathers and kids. And fathers, there's great implications here. Sa mga tatay na nanonood ngayon, kung ganito ka sacred to, to the point that God says, call me father, you know the heavy implication of what Jesus was trying to communicate to us. So for today, I'm going to talk about the demise, the design, and the destinies of dads. What's the problem? What's the original design? And what would be the destiny when we start to see fathers play the role that God has given them? And this is going to be something that I believe can change not just families but societies when fathers take their role. Let's start with the demise. Bad news muna. Bago tayo mag fried chicken mamaya dahil Father's Day. Right? The demise is we live in a fatherless society. Of the world's 2.3 billion children, 14% or 320 million are living in single parent household, mostly run by mothers. This is the demise of the world today. America has the highest rate of fatherlessness with 25 million kids having households having no fathers. In the Philippines, it's the same way because of us going abroad. To, you know, the father is absent in the home. Now, here's the problem because though fatherlessness is an issue, there is no term that this is a social problem. And if you don't think this is a social problem, there will be no social solutions. Hindi po natin susolusyonan yung problema because the world thinks it's not even a problem. But this is the problem of the world today. There are no fathers. There are no models for dads. Fatherlessness is the number one social issue in the world. In fact, if you look at statistics, I won't go through the st statistics. Most of the kids, it would have a negative effect if the father is not present. In Malachi 4 verse 5, imagine this, the last verse of the Old Testament, and then silent. What was the last verse? Look, I am sending you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord arrives. His preaching will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. The promise was there was going to, to come a Savior who would preach. And the words that would come out of His mouth would bring the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. There's going to be a restoration of the brokenness between fathers and sons and daughters when the preaching comes. But if we don't obey the grand design of God, the Bible says there will be a curse in the land. We will feel the effect in society at large when there are no fathers in the house. Grabe no bigat? Wow, the effect of fathers. Sad to say, nobody talks about this. This is not something that the world wants to talk about. We skirt through this issue. And that's why there's no discourse or even debates about fatherlessness. What's surprising is, in the last maybe five years, Eight years that we watch movies and series, Marvel movies, all of the problem. Anong root cause? Kung bakit na snap yung mga Avengers? Fatherhood issues. K dramas. 
fatherhood issues. Pinoy, fatherhood issues. It just comes out naturally that the bad guy is who? Where's dad? Why is papa? In almost all, it's not pointed in textbook, but it's shown in popular culture. It always goes back. Daddy didn't show up. And so, Malachi ends with a hope. When the preaching comes of this great Jesus, He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. He was introducing to us, here's the problem, but here's the design. I will give you the design on how to restore fathers to their sons and their daughters. The design is that fathers would lead with love. Of course, we can go and you know, try to elaborate more on the design. But if you look in Ephesians 6.4, it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Fathers, wag daw natin i-provoke yung mga anak natin para nagagalit sila sa atin. But rather, our role is to bring them up. To bring them up means we have to go down and bring them up. Remember when you had a baby? Then, right? How do you talk to your baby? You go down and you bring your baby up and you talk to your baby. We bring them up in the discipline and in the instruction of the Lord. What's the design of fathers? In 1 Corinthians 16, 13, it says, Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. Four things Paul said here. Very simple. Wala na pong kasunod tong, here's how to be watchful, here's how to... If, yeah, si Paul knows how to talk to men, no? When he talks to men, gawin mo lang. Di ba? Kasi kung, kung girl yung kausap ni Paul, be watchful. Okay, ladies, here's four ways on how to be watchful. Okay? But Paul goes straight. Men, be watchful. You have to stand firm in the faith, ha? Huh? You have to act like men. You have to be strong. Ino to ako ako. Be strong. He's talking to the men. So how do we do this? The Bible says, be watchful. Fathers, protect vigilantly. That's our design. We protect our families. We're not the predators. We're the protectors of our family. Be watchful. What comes in the house? Daddy needs to know. Daddy takes the trash out. If there's trash that came in, we take them out, right? Si Robert, no may naliligaw sa anak niya na hindi niya type, he takes them out, right? Now, okay, right? Fathers, you protect vigilantly. What is my, what are, what are they consuming? What are my kids consuming? Am I protecting them? One of the things, the most interesting about dads is their armpit. Did you realize? No matter how oily, and wet, everybody wants to stay here. Because it's the design for kids and your wife to go under your wings. Aren't you surprised? That's why we rub it, right? To make sure it has no smell. Because this is their refuge. Why would they naturally go under you because fathers protect. And we don't just protect, we protect vigilantly according to the word watchful. It's vigilant protection. I remember when, when my wife and I were in Green Hills and then we rented a place where we would just walk for around three to five minutes and do na kami sa condo. So sometimes we would watch the last full show in Promenade and go home. But there was a season where there was a lot of uh, criminals in, in the street. And so we were walking one night, and I was holding my wife, and I saw this strange-looking guy. Alam mo, instinct agad, habang naglalakad. 
Siyempre, si Tami, ganda. Instinct agad eh. Tami. Doon tayo sa kabila. Right? You protect. Malay mo may kutsilyo yun, di ba? Mamamatay din ako. Right? You protect vigilantly. Okay? That's the design of God. Are you a protector? Or are your kids afraid of you? Pag sinabi bang papa, the kids are, oh, papa's come. Or, buka, papa. Pati ka, papa. Is it always negative? Fathers, be watchful. Secondly, he says, fathers, stand firm in the faith. Fathers, you pastor your family. I'm not the pastor of your family. You are. You are the spiritual leader of the house. Right? You have to stand firm in the faith. I have to fight for my time with God because this is the only way I'm going to lead my wife and my kids. Especially if your wife is far more spiritual and holy than you. At least magkaparman konti. Because naturally, it's the wife who's more religious. Am I right? It's the wife who's more devoted. But as fathers, we need to pastor our family. And I thank God for Tammy giving me that space to pastor the family. For me to lead. For me to pray with our kids. Because that's our role. They need to see that in us. We don't delegate to honey or to the wife. Honey, ikaw na dyan, ha? Pag Bible, Bible. Ikaw na, e effort talaga tayo, daddies. There's something about a man leading spiritually. You see, ito lang secret sa mga tatay na natatakot baka yung anak ko mapunta sa isang lalaking. If you lead spiritually and they see the godliness in you, they would look for a man who is as godly as you. Why? There's a model in the house. Pag Christian pala talaga yung asawa, bait oh, bait kay mami, ganun yung gusto kong boyfriend. Of course, another way around, if you're Christian and you're harsh to your wife and they see that, it's another message that you give. Fathers, you pastor your family. Men, I encourage you to read the Bible to apply the Scripture, to take time to be in solitude with the Lord because that's our role as dads. I need to stand firm in the faith. When everybody else is doubting, I need to be the man of faith in the house and would tell them, come on, God will see us through. It says, act like men. Fathers, we provide. And I'm not just talking about financially. But there's, when we talk about provision, it's coming from the word vision. And fathers, we plan for our house and make sure that we have a follow-through because we are the providers. Right? Fathers provide. That means... I give you and cover to you the basic needs of the house. That's a father. I'm not telling you dapat lahat ng lalaki mas mataas ang sweldo kaysa sa babae. It's not. There's no such thing in Scripture. But then, am I doing something? Am I going out? I remember a preaching that Pastor Ferdy gave to us when we were in college. He says, there's something about a man going out of the house to work every day. Imagine the vision of a dad going out to work. Of course, now, when you go out to work, it's inside the house. No? But there's something when daddy works that kids would say, oh, thank you that daddy works. Right? Dad, choppy. Yeah, daddy works. Okay. Fathers provide. Look at this, 1 Timothy 5.8. For me, uh, this is one of the most parang pinakmalakas na verse na parang, ooh, sakit. 
Why would, why would Paul write this? But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an un unbeliever. Wow! Chineko na eh. Ano bang ibig sabihin nito? Ito talaga yung ibig sabihin nito. Sabi ko, baka may spiritual meaning lang yan. But men were designed to provide. The members of the household. Okay. Sa mga asawang nagre-reklamo na mas mataas ang sweldo ng misis nila at na-insecure ka, magpasalamat ka na lang. Alright? And lastly, be strong in the Lord. Okay. Fathers, we plan and prepare. When things don't go our way, the pandemic has destroyed some of our plans. Right? But when we say, let's be strong. Okay? Pag sa Bible sinabing be strong, Joshua, Moses, telling Joshua, okay, Joshua, you're the next. Papa Moses, what's your advice? Be strong in the Lord. Take courage. Again, I say, be strong. Here palang you would start to see already what every man needs to hear from his dad. Son, I need you to be strong. But, 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 be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Fathers, we plan and we prepare. Proverbs 24, 27. Do your planning and prepare your fields before building your house. I'm thankful to my dad for teaching us this. My dad would always say, you have to work. You, you cannot be ano, always asking for doll out, dad, money. You have to plan, you have to prepare your fields before even getting married and building your house. Do we have a plan? To all the single men listening to this, Right? This is like advanced course for you. Do your planning and prepare your field. What is the, what's in my hands that the Lord wants me to uh, cultivate so that when I marry, the woman that I'm bringing into the house is not acquiring my problems, but rather the blessings because I prepared for it. And fathers, we do that to our sons and to our daughters, especially to our sons. Teach them now. Anak, magplano ka. Anak, prepare. Because one day, you'll date a girl and you will pay. One day, you'll build a house and it's not cheap. Plan Prepare. Right. Now, again, I'm thankful for the fathers of the house. If your earthly dad is not doing that to you, we have so many dads here in our community that actually can help you with this. You just need to talk to them or link them with someone. There was this mom who called me and said, you know, my son needs to talk to somebody because he's questioning the faith. Can you talk to him? The mom knows there's so many fathers in the house that can actually talk to his son. My son needs help. Mukhang wala silang plano. They're going to get married three months from now. Can you help? Can you check? Because sometimes our, the kids, when it's the daddy, mommy speaking, they don't believe. And then the same thing that somebody says, they say, you know, you're right, you're right. My mom and dad never said that. But you keep saying that. This is the power of community, right? Do your planning, prepare your fields before building your house. And I'm thankful to have so many fathers. Even up to now, I have so many fathers in the house. 
That's the design. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. What's the destiny that God has for dads and for families? The destiny is to see godly fathers raising sons and daughters in the house. It's to see a multiplication of this happen that would have an effect in our society. That's the destiny. Fathers, bring them up in the discipline or into full maturity and instruction of the Lord. Fathers, mothers, our role is that when the kids are under our care, we do whatever it takes to sharpen them, train them, disciple them, pastor them, because one day I know I will release them. One day, they're going to say, Dad, I'm getting married. Right? Psalms 127 verse 4, Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are the children of one's youth. The Bible says our children are like what? Arrows. Ano bang ginagawa ng archer? As a LaSalle student, nah, okay lang. <laughs> he sharpens the arrow. A lot of friction, a lot of sharpening to raise our kids. And then what do you do? Do you put it back? No. When the orcs come, what do you do? You release them. Where do you release them? Into the world. <gasps> but that's my baby. <laughs> I remember when, when, when I was engaged to Tammy, my mom was not, you know, my mom was like, Oh, I don't know if you can do it. <laughs> You're a pastor. You don't have money. <laughs> you know, I know <laughs> you might grow thin, you know, all these worries. I skipped because my eldest, then two brother, brother, sister, then me. I skipped both because when I saw Tammy, I said, I, I can't let go. I'm never going to give you. Okay, no, no, okay. <laughs> so parang, I was ready to get married. My mom was like, no, you're not. Darling, you're not. Baby, you're not. But I knew I was ready. And so I had a date with my mom. Alala ko pa, dyan pa sa UCC, sa Petron, sa labas ng Dasmarinas Village. Makain kami. Say ko lang, Ma, bilib ka ba sa parenting mo? Say ko, oh naman. <laughs> trap to trap. Kung bilib ka talaga sa parenting mo, why are you worrying that I'm getting married? You think you did a bad job raising me? No. I got her work. I got her, okay? Just with two questions. Yeah. I said, Mom, you've raised up a man who is responsible and he will do everything to make sure my family is well fed and that there's going to be a plan. Dapat bilib ka sa sarili mo. Yun, binola pa. Okay. Waiter, bayad. Okay. Bigay sa nanay ko. Okay, so, right? UCC, mahal eh. Okay, so. You have to understand, as parents, that's our role. We sharpen our kids. We don't want to raise entitled, spoiled kids who think the world revolves around them. Why? Because if we release them into the world, Blessing bayan. Pastor Ferdy would always say this. If you're complaining about your kids, there's a bigger monkey in the house. That's you <laughs> and me, parents. In Tagalog, magulang. Okay? Joke yun. Okay. Magulang. Okay, so. Like arrows. Pastor Steve would always illustrate this as archers would have a goal. And when we release them, we want them to hit 
the goal. They won't always hit the goal. But that's our job. To create that space for them to become the best sons and daughters who will be released into the world by the grace of God. It's not going to be perfect. Of course, there will be maturity, conflict, as we sharpen. But once we release them, it's out of our hands. And that's why we tell you to pastor your kids. Because at the end of the day, they're not going to run to us. They're going to look at you and they will say, how will I do this now? Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. You want people to see how blessed this man and woman is because of their kids. Again, you look at Scripture, the life of a father is always narrated through the life of his sons and daughters. That's our life, especially our words and action are like sword. It's like a, that's our like two-edged sword. We can either sharpen or kill. We can either hear words of life from our fathers, anak, you can do it. Or, anak, ito na naman. Anak, di mo kaya yan. Masakit pag galing sa tatay. Right? Okay lang sa social media. People would come, yeah, you cannot do it. But if daddy says, I can, I can. Because that's the power of a dad's word. We either sharpen our kids or we slice their dreams. Because that's the weight of our words. We can sharpen or we can destroy. We have to learn how to speak life and blessings. Bigne bless dapat natin yung mga anak natin. Right? Bless your kids. You know, I I am honored. I'm just 41, okay? Bata pa, bata pa. Like Pastor Robert, okay? I'm honored to have a lot of fathers in the house. These are some of the fathers that I look up to, aside from my own earthly dad, right? And these are fathers that I walk with, fathers who I look up to. Their words matter to me. Sometimes they have few words, but it matters to me. In short, I trust their discernment, right? I trust who they are, not perfect, but their fathers in the house for me. Right? And I think we've learned this growing up in this movement. Nalala ko pa si Bishop Ferdy. Si Bishop Ferdy nagturo sa akin paano maging gentleman. Because it was never taught. I grew up in Divisoria. You are on your own. It, if there's a jeep that's about to hit you, make sure it's the girl beside you who gets hit, right? It's Divisoria. Right? No rules. It's the jungle. But I remember there was a time I was crossing the street and Pastor Ferdy told me it should be the girl on the safe side and you're on the danger side. You die first and then her. Okay? I remember there was a time I went up the bus with Bishop Ferdy. He was our uh, youth pastor then. And I start and I was sitting down and he tells me, So, I mean, let the girl sit first. I didn't know that. I was clueless. But I had fathers who taught me that. Right? Fathers who taught me how to do things. Fathers who we can call. This is rare, once a decade. Okay. Okay. Away kami. But we have fathers we can talk to. Something you cannot buy in the world only happens for free in community. Fathers in the house. 
and fathers need to speak life and blessings. Right? This is my dad. This is my earthly dad. His name is Jesus. Since you're from Makati, not from Green Hills, a little introduction. Si Jesus po ang nagbayad ng tuition fee ko. Jesus provided for me. Jesus is good, okay? <laughs> si Jesus si, okay? That's my dad. And my dad's very quiet. He rarely... You know, and he grew up in the Jaworski Babinite era, if you know what I mean. To encourage you, he discourages you. They have a belief before, if I destroy you, I will build resilience. No? So, kunyari, pag sinabi niyang, lasal ka pa naman, that should... <gasps> diba? So, my pros and cons... The Bobby Knight method, alam ni Coach Robert yan, kasi basketball player, di ba? Di ba? Pag sinabing, I cannot say it in the pulpit, no? Negative words about you, it should challenge you to become better. That's how I build you up. But then he became a Christian. And his heart started getting a little soft. Right? And, I, and there was this time when I did something, I forgot what it was. So we were in our house, and to give you a picture of the house, may staircase kami na pa, what do you call that? Huh? Spiral. Okay, nagutom ako. Okay, spiral. Okay, spiral. Okay. okay. Pumasok yung steak. Okay, spiral. Right? My dad, you know, I can count how many I love yous, how many, a good job na ba siya sa akin? Ganyan siya mag-good job. Hey. Yeah, good job yun, okay. Hey. okay. So, to the staff here, you now understand why I'm like that, di ba? Pag say, Avi, hey. okay, good job yun, okay. All right, that's passed on to me, okay? I'm very encouraging that way, okay? But, there was this one time, only one time I could not remember another time like this. That I went home, I had my backpack, college. I did something, I forgot what I did, but I could not forget what happened. He was in the middle of the spiral staircase, and he told me, Anak, son, come here. Now, when my dad speaks English, oh my, this is something, okay? He says, son, come here. I said, okay. And then he said, he was going to hug. Now, Chinese, you do not hug. You never hug. All right? It's a sign of weakness. Okay. My dad says, oh. he never hugged. The last time we hugged, maybe I was six and we were wrestling. All right? He says, come here. And then he did this. And... I was like shocked. You, you know the movies where everything becomes slow? Most, most of the time, so movies, mamamatay ka na nun eh, so, And so I remember, it's like the world stopped because he was asking me to hug him. And I remember running to my dad. Pa, pa. <laughs> oh, parang TikTok, ha? Pa. <laughs> I remember hugging him, and he said something that until today, it's here. Never happen again. He said, son, I'm proud of you. Powerful words. Super. Until, of course, I, I would have hoped he would say it more often. <laughs> but I believe those words are already kept in my heart. Because that's how powerful the words of fathers that fathers have. Baon ko na. But you know what's the greatest news of all this? As I read the scripture, as I spend time with God, my father, every day, every time I open the word, especially when I sin, I fail. I don't do things right. When I open the scripture, Father God, 
speaks and affirms. And I want to end with a story. I've always read the baptism of Jesus. Like, wow, dove coming down. But I've never seen it in this light. I was meditating on it. It was actually an exercise they gave us in school. And they said, find a text and spend one hour on that text. Of course, being a good student, I found two verses. <laughs> Para tapos na agad. But I remember spending time reading and rereading a few verses. The baptism of Jesus. That when Jesus went down that water, the dove came and God the Father said, This is my son with whom I am well pleased. You know when did that happen? Day one of Jesus' ministry here on earth when he had done nothing. God affirms him and says, Anak ko to, mahal na, mahal ko to. This is my son with whom I am well pleased. God speaks to us. God invites us. Fathers, God invites us. Sons, daughters, God invites us to a love that will change families, that would change how you would father your kids, that would change how you would mother your kids. Not because I do things for daddy, but because I'm your son. Imagine a world when you go home. Imagine if something supernatural happens. Every child, son and daughter, comes home today to have lunch. And daddy and mommy comes to them and tells them, I am so pleased with you. I love you so much. But what did we do? Nothing. Because you're my son. Because you're my daughter. Imagine the healing. Imagine the transformation. When you pray, pray like this. Our Father. The power that every father has in his disposal to bring up his sons and daughters in the discipline and what? The instruction of the Lord. Sa daming instruction ni Lord, I hope we get the heart of the message today. The instruction to love like Christ. As fathers, as mothers, as sons and daughters. Because the destiny He's preaching will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. And the result will be what? Blessings. Abundant blessings as we would see healing restored in families. Where do we start? And I want to end with this. We start here. Among ourselves. Wag muna tayo lumabas. Wag ka muna mag-vlog. Mag-vlog, i-YouTube. Practice natin muna to sa bahay. And start letting it flow among our sons and our daughters. And for those of you who don't have dads or your dad is far away, learn how to do this in the community where there are fathers of the house. Take this opportunity to build relationships with the fathers in this household. I see a lot of fathers in this house. And I believe God is going to do something that would revolutionize how you live your life because we now see the heart of the Father. Let's bow down our heads and let us pray. 
And I want to pray first for all the dads who are here today, even online. Lord Jesus, we come to you as men. Men surrendered unto your will, men who are sometimes clueless at what we're doing. But Lord Jesus, shape us to have the Father heart of God. Lord, we know it is the longing of every son and every daughter to hear the words of affirmation, of love and acceptance that can only come from a father. Words from a father cannot be replaced by the words of a mom or an uncle or a cousin or a teacher. It's a sacred duty we have as fathers. Lord, teach me to become a better dad today. Lord, I receive the heart of God so that when I see my sons and daughters, I would see them with your eyes, with eyes of love, of faith, of compassion, of purpose. Lord, anoint me as your father. Lord, anoint me as a father. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I pray for every dad who are here today, on site and online. Give us the heart of God. And Lord, we also want to lift up to you every son and daughter who's listening to this. And Lord, for some of us, baka may kurot sa puso namin because we don't have a good relationship with our dads. In fact, there's bitterness, unforgiveness, and even sometimes hate. But Lord, you said you're preaching. When we start opening the Scripture, the preaching that would come from you will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and turn the hearts of the children to their fathers. Lord, today is day one of that return. I don't know what kind of relationship you have with your dad I'm sure it's not the perfect one but I also know God wants to bring healing and restoration over that relationship and maybe your dad left the family or maybe your dad did something to hurt you today is your day one of reconciliation today you're saying Lord restore what the devil has stolen restore the brokenness, heal the wounds. And I want you to do something today, just an act of faith. If you need to release forgiveness, or if you need to pray a prayer and pray for your dad today, I want you to do that. A prayer that would honor not only God the Father, but God, but, but your earthly father. I want you to move in the opposite spirit. I want you to start praying and blessing your Father. over fathers and sons and fathers and daughters. Lord, heal. Bind up the wounds. Lord, give us a revelation of the love of the Father so that we can tap into that love as we honor and love our fathers. 
for the fathers so that we can tap into that to parent and to raise up our children in the love and the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Jesus, come. Holy Spirit, come. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you because this word is for us today. Lord, we receive your word today. Holy Spirit, guide us. Holy Spirit, help us to apply what we've learned today, no matter how hard. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give you an assignment for everyone. I want you to take this time to honor your dad because it's the right thing to do. Not because he's the right dad, but because it's the right thing to do. Maybe a sentence, a letter, a text, food with a dedication. Do something today. It's Father's Day. Ito na yung pinakamagandang excuse to be a little more vulnerable to your dad's Father's Day. So can you take time to do that? People who are online, take time to text, take this opportunity to honor your father today. Right? And to all the dads out there, happy Father's Day. I do pray and hope that we would embrace the role that God has given us. I'm excited for the destinies of the dads in our house and that this kind of culture is something that we would spread throughout the city. God bless you guys. Enjoy your time with your dads. Enjoy time with your family today. Happy Father's Day and see you again next week. God bless.